It's exciting. We're all so happy to be here in person, even seeing each other on staff, but then also to see our visitors. It's, it's great. Pablo Picasso said the purpose of art is to wash away the dust of daily life off our souls. Well, in Newark, perhaps the dust of a pandemic that closed the Newark Museum of Art for 14 months was washed away today. I've been waiting for the show to open for over a year, and, and the fact that we are here today feels so good. Um, so, yeah, I'm yeah, very, very excited. The museum may have closed, but it's still been busy trying to keep audiences engaged in a creative way. We're going to get a little messy. We're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to use food items from our kitchen and other objects from our kitchen to make portraits. One of the things that we worked on very quickly and, and changed what the museum experience would be was, of course, we went virtual all the way from a murder mystery from the Ballantine House to uh, how to develop your own video game, to concerts, to artist talks, to uh, virtual studio visits with artists. So we took what was here and we brought it out to the world virtually. While these free programs may have kept art enthusiasts engaged, they didn't exactly fill the gaping $6 million hole in the museum's operating budget caused by COVID shutdowns. Several months ago, the museum made a decision to deaccession several art pieces, selling them for a combined total of $5.9 million. Several historians and scholars denounced the move, but the museum defends it. Deaccessioning is a regular process uh, with all museums routinely with the size of their collections, and the um, proceeds from that sale will be used for collection care for the museum. It's something that a lot of museums are looking at right now. Kassendorf says it won't make the museum completely whole because that money doesn't go into the operating budget. That lost a third of its revenue. So they're working hard to get people back into the museum in person. One way they've always done that is by featuring local artists like Wolfgang Gill, who's thrilled to finally be able to share his Sonic Geometries exhibition that creates a visceral experience of sound. Right here? Right there. Right there. My work is meant to be experienced. It's all about the experience and it's very difficult, almost impossible to be able to document that and like show it online or something like that. So to me, it's like super, super important. And he's not the only local artist featured in the reopening. Behind me, this beautiful quilted portrait called Warmth of Other Suns is by contemporary artist Bisa Butler. Bisa is a local, a good friend of the museum. She also taught in the New York Public School System. Butler's piece just came back from the Art Institute of Chicago to be a permanent exhibit in Newark. And while they can't wait to once again display the vast collection here, some things will remain from this period of adjustment. The virtual piece has been so successful. We have audiences now across the country and across the world. The best I can say is that it will be a hybrid experience of being in the museum and then additional experiences online. The museum will host an outdoor summer series called Arts in the Garden where they'll partner with organizations like the New Jersey Symphony Orchestra. They'll have jazz performances, films, a pride celebration as just a few of their offerings. That'll kick off on June 9th. In Newark, I'm Joanna Gagas, NJ Spotlight News.